And this is the person that's literally driving me crazy, making me smoke more because now my mama complaining to me about a motherfucker that ain't got shit to do with me. Why don't you get your husband up and have him go do something instead of just running his goddamn mouth about nothing? You must be crazy. I go and I'm tapping on the back window like a fucking crackhead, looking like my Uncle Tony. The same, another motherfucker of my family member that's dead right now because of what? Because AJ needed somewhere to stay. Let's talk about it. My uncle, dead and gone. Your brother, dead and gone. Living in a van outside just like what? Like I was. Oh no, don't, don't come, don't, 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 you can't park in the, can't park in the driveway, you know, AJ. No, no, you can't smoke right there because, because AJ. AJ must be the motherfucking messiah. And you about to find out just how much he ain't. You're about to find out just how much he ain't. You about to find out what happens when you put a man before God. Anybody know? Hmm. What happens when we put a man before God? Mama got to have a life too. Put a man before God. Leave your child. Sound like the story with the, with the mom that rolled over on her own goddamn baby. Rolled over on her own baby in the Bible. <coughs> And took the baby of the woman that was laying next to her. Took the baby of the woman that was laying next to her in the morning and said, oh no, that's not my baby that's dead. This is my baby. <laughs> confusion in the household. The devil will come in and cause confusion in your household. Like I said, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. And I'm not angry, I'm yelling for effect. I don't allow you guys to scare it into my house like that. Because this is my house. This is where God allows me to be safe, warm, comfortable. So I get home, tapping on the window. Trying to get in the house. My cousin answers the window. And says, what are you doing here? You're not even supposed to be here. Beg her to let me in. I'm still... I had taken so many pills to kill myself. I have no... It has literally always been by the grace of God. It is. I used to think he was taunting me. I used to say, Father, Lord, have mercy. Why? <laughs> if it was anyone else, they'd be gone. Okay? Why are you taunting me? But he wanted me to see this. He wanted me to see. He wanted me to see what I was killing myself for. He wanted me to understand just how much it didn't matter. How much I mattered, but how much they didn't matter. I get inside the house. I just go straight to the room to go lay down. I'm 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 on Seroquel. You know about Seroquel, it, it, it just knocks you out. My mother comes barging in the door. Oh no, you can't be in the house. You can't be in the house. You have to get out the house. You have to get out the house. You have to. I I went and slept in my car, guys. It wasn't the first time that I had had to sleep in my car whilst dealing with my mother and her husband. It wasn't the first time I had been homeless as a female while just trying to get my mind together. Biggest problem was I smoked weed. I had a job at one point in time. I, I, I used to work at Universal Studios. But every time I got home and had to deal with AJ, Every time I had to get home 
and deal with Satan. I could not get my grip. It was like running up a steep fucking mountain of slick snow where your feet just keep, as soon as you think you're about to get your grip and go, here come another doozy that he throwing that my mom's gung-ho with. Gung-ho. You have parted ways and have collectively pulled my mother away from her own family because you have no family. As I just spoke to my own womb carrier, honor thy mother and thy father and thy days shall be long. Now, we don't know how long. We don't even know if tomorrow I might die and I still have honored you. But what I do know is, my father also says, respect goes both ways. It's a two-way street. And I have felt very disrespected for a very long time. And I have brought it up plenty of times. I have brought it up plenty of times. Every time I would try to go talk to my stepfather's children, and they would disrespect me. I had one of his children even pull up on me in their vehicle, stating that they were going to whoop my ass and kill me, hurt me, beat me, maim me, everything she could have said, she said it. Nothing came of that. Every time I have raised my voice even slight of an octave, I get yelled at. I get told that I'm crazy. I get told, oh, okay, well, that's fine, whatever. Yeah, okay, that's fine, whatever, too. Now, watch when my father starts saying that to you. Watch when my father above starts saying that to y'all, though. Watch when my father starts taking the examples of how you wrote yourself in my story and starts writing it down in y'all. Send it out. Send out the press. I am tired. And exhausted of this. I'm not a cat. If we can't sit down as adults. And talk about things. And like I've said. Like many of the other adults. Even to my other cousin Brandon. He has tried in his own special way. To state. We have generational curses going on. This is what he's been trying to say. And he wants help breaking them. Same thing I've been saying, but it's very, his journey is a little bit different than mine. He's so uncomfortable in, in what his family has become, like I used to be, which all of us, we, when we first start our spiritual awakening, when you first start looking around and reading the code of what is going on, you really start pinpointing things that have bothered you all your life. Then when you really figure out, okay, that's been bothering me, it's like, you figure out a sore has been grotesquely growing across your body that you've just been ignoring. You've seen it. You've realized it. You, you keep going. You know it hurts. It's bleeding. It's smelling. But for some reason, you just haven't taken care of it. And then all of a sudden, something snaps one day and you finally see it for what it is. You see the blood. You see the stains. You see the scars. You see everything for what it is. You see just how, how deep it's grown inside of you. How, how it's weaving and woven and wicking and twining. Between your spine. between. Let me tell you something. It is an amazing thing when you feel like you are holding on to too much. And then you start just, you just sit and you spew it out. And you just get it out. And then at the end you can breathe. And you finally realize once again how much you've been holding on to. And just no one is giving you the chance to lay it down. I have grown comfortable in myself. Enough to know who I am. And the same way Jesus told his mother, either you wait for me out there or you come and congregate with us in here. That is the same thing I'm saying to my family. 
I have no dealings with anyone of this world that has no real footing with him up there. There's nothing that we're going to agree on. There's nothing that we're going to have topics on. There is nothing. There's nothing without him. And a lot of y'all older folk done lost y'all Mickey Flicky mind. Y'all done lost y'all Mickey Flicky mind. Thinking that, oh, just because he's young, he don't know what he's talking about. Break and bend. But what I know is what I know. And I know that giving any child trauma and not coming face to face with it is not okay. I was better off leaving my daughter Savannah and not causing more trauma in that house, not trying to for, bruh, for God put a rat in the wall that all you could hear all night would I can't even I, I don't even have nothing that sound like that but no matter how much I try to stay God put something in my way and no matter how much I keep trying to deal with my family, God keeps showing me it's not okay. It's not okay. If you do not answer and repent for the things that you have done before you go, you will answer and repent for them for sure when you leave. There is too much in that house. There is too much in that house, and that is why I do not come over there. There has been too much going on without God being present. There is too much going on when we think that a man has become, become omnipotent. I don't care what the amount of money is, and we have watched me over six years, baby. But today, who I am now may not be who I was then, but today, there is no amount of money that I would exchange for my father. There is no person on this planet that I would say, baby, if it came down, y'all saw me when, I, when Choco got kidnapped. And I came to the conclusion, if my father says it be, then it is so. And that is it. There is a period. I can go cry about the period, but that's going to be it. I've explained to you guys what is coming. I need to keep myself spiritually cleansed of negativity and stupidity. And any person thinking that they can just keep skipping over generational curses is a fool. Is a fool. Because what didn't happen to me might happen to your granddaughter, might happen to your grandsons. And I'm just giving you a heads up. Don't say I didn't tell you so. Some bones is going to come out of a motherfucker's closet. I'm sure of it. Oh, I'm sure some bones are going to come out of that man's closet. Woo! Same way everybody want to put my stuff on Forefront and Fourth Street and call me this and say this about me and talk about me and this and that. I felt your spirit. I've read your text messages between each other to others, everything. The same way y'all was reading my messages, right? Same way AJ was reading my letters to you, right, mom? Yeah. Learned it from y'all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Clap it up. I learned it from you. Learn from the best. I've seen your lies and I'm calling you on your bluffs. You know God like you say you do? Show me. Show me. Because your, your time is ticking, baby. My time is ticking, oh, for sure. But I plan on hearing job well done. What do you think you will hear? I think everybody needs to ask themselves that t today. While going into the next day. What is God going to say to me when I get to heaven? 
I've sat, I've sat days and thought about this. What is my father going to say when we first get to see each other? It's like seeing somebody for the first time that you ain't seen in forever. Is it going to be a bad first encounter? Is it going to be like, a, oh my God. Literally, oh my God. <laughs> Bro. But I've sat with myself and I've had talks with God about these type of things. Like, I'd be so excited, bro. Like, I talk to him like, it's my dad. I never really had a real one. I never really had a real father figure. I taught myself how to shave. If I'm correct, I've taught myself how to use tampons and stuff too. Yeah. Wow. I taught myself how to cut my hair. What well, little girl? It's raining. Oh, you're so sad because it's raining. Oh, the baby. Oh, it's the babies. Oh, it's the babies. Not the babies, Lord. Not the babies, Lord. The babies. I care about my, my fur children like they my own children, bro. And I would never do to my kids what y'all have done to yours. I don't know why people can't see but I can. And I'm tired of wasting my breath explaining. Look, it's an it's a giraffe. It's it's a giraffe. It's a it's a giraffe. It's a gi Why am I going to keep arguing with you? Why not just stop talking to me? I'm tired. I do what I have to do and barely get enough attention for that. My birthday just passed and yes, I made it <coughs> I made it sound like it was okay, but no, it, it really bothered me that my mom, my brother, my sister-in-law, even my stepdad, he got a car. Nobody could just drive me my cake. None of you could bring Jebediah. Jebediah, the one that goes and plays with the kids, the one that goes and walks the dogs, the one that cleans up the dog shit. Nobody could bring Jebediah his enchiladas <coughs> and his birthday cake. You live 10 minutes away. It's my 33rd birthday. But what was funny was that I had literally already went and bought myself my own cake. I had made myself my own like tray of enchiladas. It was like God working through me to say, you know what? You're not going to be crying this year over spilt milk. When you can just pour yourself your own glass. Why are you waiting for someone to celebrate with you when we've been celebrating together continuously? I'm going to say this and I'm going to go. Where's my baby at? Love is not difficult. Love is not hard. Love is not blind. Love is not ignorant. Love is not mean. Love does not cheat. Love does not make you feel like you're less than. And I hope people just start to realize that. As I've said, the more I come into my awakening, the more you guys will be in a dark age. But I'm good with that. So, put this on record. Jebediah is not taking no more shit. Jebediah is a grown man. Jebediah is a growing man. Jebediah's muscles is growing. Jebediah's chest is growing. Jebediah's brain is growing. And Jebediah has not liked what he saw for a very long time. And Jebediah is going to speak on that. If that offends anyone, you should have wrote a different story in my book. I love my mother. I love my earthly father. 
But what we will not do, what we are not sent here to do, is create the same generational curse for the next generation. It will end with me. And I will make sure that y'all's is cut off as well. Have a good day, everybody.